Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and in this lecture we will be discussing about the different factors that are responsible for affecting the enzyme activity, that is the rate of reaction and also we will try to see that uh, what are the allosteric enzymes. So there are several different factors or the parameters that can be responsible for altering the rate of reaction. That is the rate at which the enzyme is converting the reactants into the products. So there are some of these factors that are responsible for governing that rate of reaction. And these include substrate concentration, enzyme concentration, product concentration, temperature, pH, activators and inhibitors. So we are going to look into these factors one by one and understand that how exactly they are able to alter the activity of the enzyme. So the first factor is the effect of temperature. So you guys know that there is this enzyme and it has an active site. This is the active site or the part of the enzyme that is responsible for binding a substrate. Once the substrate binds to it, the reaction takes place and products are released. Now, how exactly the temperature is affecting this binding of the substrate and conversion into products? If we want to see the trend that is graphically, what happens is that as the temperature is increased, the activity of the enzyme is also increased. Why is it happening? Because when the temperature is increasing, there are more collisions happening between the substrate molecules and the enzyme active site molecules. So because of these more collisions, there is more formation of the enzyme substrate complex and eventually the conversion of product. So this happens when you keep on increasing the temperature. But this increase in the activity of the enzyme won't be happening as you increase the temperature until a certain temperature condition only, which means that once a specific temperature is achieved, after that, the enzyme activity will start to decline. As you can say here in the graph, that as you are increasing the temperature, the activity of the enzyme is also increasing, but on a certain temperature point, which is known as the optimum temperature, if you further increase the temperature, the decline in the enzyme activity will be noticed. Now, why is there a decline in the activity of the enzyme after this temperature increase? Because when you increase the temperature very high, there is a disruption of the bonds that are holding the active site intact in the enzyme. Now, due to the disruption of those bonds, the active site will lose its three-dimensional conformation and hence no longer will be able to bind to the substrate and convert into products. So that is the reason why it happens. So the, uh, so the increase in the temperature can increase the enzyme catalytic activity up to a certain limit only. And the maximum activity is observed between 30 to 45 degrees Celsius for most of the enzymes. So this is the optimum uh, temperature condition for most of the enzymes. And beyond 45 degrees Celsius, the enzyme activity is reduced drastically due to the loss of three-dimensional conformation. And if you uh, like increase the temperature even further, there will be denaturation of the enzymes that it will lose the conformation completely. The second effect, uh, the second parameter is the effect of pH. Now there is a certain range of pH in the biological bodies in which the enzymes are functioning their best. For example, uh, in the human bodies, it's around six to seven point something. So the enzymes, they are functioning in this range uh, only. If you increase the pH or decrease the pH outside this limit, there will be a change in the activity of the enzyme. Why is it happening? Again, you know that the active site of the enzyme is having certain amino acids and there are certain charges present on those amino acids. If you are increasing or decreasing the pH, there is a disruption of these charges, which means that these charges will change. Probably there are going to be certain interactions due to the increased ionic concentration. So because of this disruption of the charges, the active site will again lose its conformation and hence not be able to bind to the substrate anymore and form the products. 
So therefore, the enzymes are active only over a range of pH and most enzymes are specific to a particular pH. Now, this pH uh, on which the enzyme is going to show its maximum activity de depends on the part of the body where this enzyme is present. For example, if we talk about trypsin, it is active in the alkaline medium, which means that alkaline pH is required for its activity. If we talk about pepsin, which is a stomach enzyme, it's active in the acidic pH because you know that stomach, they are they have acidic acids present. And diastase, that this is active in neutral medium. So most of the enzymes, they have a specific pH at which they show their maximum activity. Outside this pH, they will not show their activity because of the disruption of the charges present in their active site. And if you look at the graphical representation, there's a bell-shaped curve formed. And this bell-shaped curve is covering the range of pH where this enzyme will show its activity. Outside this range, the uh, activity is declining. The third point is the substrate concentration, that how exactly the concentration of the substrate is affecting the activity of the enzyme. So as you increase the substrate concentration, the activity of the enzyme is also increasing. So the enzyme activity is increasing with the increase in the substrate concentration. Why is it happening? Because if there will be more substrates, there will be more collisions happening between the enzyme's active site and the substrates. And hence, there will be more formation of the enzyme substrate complex and eventually the production of the products. But this can happen only till a certain extent. Why? Because there will be a limited number of enzymes. For example, let's say that you have these five molecules of enzymes and I have shown the active sites of these enzymes. Now you have certain substrates present here. Now as the substrate concentration is increasing, there will be more uh, enzyme substrate complexes being formed and eventually the products. But once all of these enzyme active sites are saturated, which means they are covered with the substrates, there will no longer be an increase in the active site of the enzyme. Why? Because there will be no active sites left behind, right? So as you increase the substrate concentration, the rate of reaction is increasing, but up, up till a certain uh, level only. And after that, if you increase the substrate concentration even further, there will be a saturation point because all of the active sites will now be covered with the substrates. So after the saturation, the enzyme activity becomes steady. And after this, if you keep on increasing uh, the substrate concentration, there will be no positive effect on the velocity of the reaction. The next point is the effect of enzyme concentration, that how exactly the concentration of the enzyme is affecting the rate of reaction. So an increase in the concentration of enzyme will increase the rate of reaction if enough substrate is present in the medium. So as you increase the enzyme concentration, the rate of reaction will also increase. Why? Because there will be more active sites present to bind to the substrate. And at a high concentration of the enzyme, the effect of inhibitor will be very less. Why? Because there are enough enzyme active sites present to bind to the substrate and form the products. But again, this is having a saturation point as well. How? Because this depends on the amount of substrate present. For example, let's say there are lots of enzymes present in the medium, but there are a limited number of substrate molecules. Even if you keep on increasing the enzyme concentration, if the substrate concentration is limited, there will be no increase in the uh, rate of reaction after a certain point because until then, all the substrate molecules will be converted into products. So there should be enough substrate present to bind to the increased active sites in the medium. And the next one is effect of inhibitors. Now, inhibitors are the molecules that are able to suppress the activity of the enzyme. They will inhibit the activity of the enzyme. So how exactly this thing uh, happens? So what happens is that uh, in the normal reaction, let's suppose that this is an enzyme. This is the active site of the enzyme. The substrate is carrying the complementary shape to the active site of the enzyme. It comes, it binds and forms the enzyme substrate complex. And eventually the reactions take place and the products are released from the active site. Now, what happens when an inhibitor comes into play? 
there are two types of inhibitions that happen one is competitive inhibition and the second is non competitive inhibition competitive inhibition itself is saying that it is doing some kind of competition in the active side so let us see that what exactly i mean to say here so competitive inhibitor is an inhibitor which is having a similar kind of shape as to the substrate of a specific enzyme which means that it is complementary to the active site of the enzyme it is mimicking the role of a substrate for example for this enzyme this green colored one is the actual substrate which will come bind form the enzyme substrate complex and form the product eventually but if a competitive inhibitor comes into play it is going to have the same shape as that of the um substrate which means that it is mimicking the substrate it is having a complementary shape to the active site of the respective enzyme it comes and binds there and binds with strong forces that it's not able to uh, form the products and also prevent the substrate from binding and eventually forming the product so the substrate binding is blocked due to the presence of competitive inhibitor at the active site of the enzyme on the other hand side we have non competitive inhibitors the name itself is suggesting that this doesn't have any kind of competition going on but rather it is doing something else that is able to uh in inhibit the binding of the substrate to the active site so what what happens when a non competitive inhibitor comes into play so a non competitive inhibitor is an inhibitor that comes and binds to some other site on the active site not on the active site but rather something else there is another site present specific for that inhibitor it comes and binds on that site and leads to the change in the conformation of the um active site which leads to the inability of the substrate to convert into product so something happens in the active site due to which the substrate gets stuck and it cannot move out to form the product also in some cases there is the substrate will not bind at all there will be a change in the conformation of the active site the substrate cannot bind or if it gets bind it will not be able to re release itself so this is the effect of the non competitive inhibitor on the other hand side we have activators as well the activators are the molecules which are able to enhance the activity of the enzyme so how they are doing that so uh, let's suppose that this is an enzyme and this is a positive activator molecule this is an activator this comes and bind to the enzyme on a different site other than the active site and leads to some changes in the active site of the enzyme leading to the change in the shape which is able to bind to the substrate now so the substrate is having the complementary shape to the altered active site now so previously the active site was not having a shape complementary to the substrate but because of the addition of this activator the shape is now changed as complementary to the substrate so this is how the activators work so there is a specific class of enzymes here which we call as allosteric enzymes or they are also known as allosteric modulators so the binding of these specific types of modulators to the specific site in the enzyme will cause more activated forms of enzymes and hence they are responsible for regulating the enzyme reaction and these allosteric mod modulators they do not bind to the active site but rather on a different site which is known as an allosteric site as we just saw in case of the non competitive inhibitors and here in case of the positive effectors as well so allosteric means other site so there are two receptor sites for these enzymes one is for the positive uh, modulator and one is for the negative modulator now there is one more concept of feedback inhibition so inside the physiological bodies when a lot of pathways are taking place this feedback inhibition is a very important concept to regulate the enzymes and to regulate the pathway so feedback inhibition occurs when a biochemical product of a pathway blocks an enzyme at the beginning of the pathway for example let's say that there is a pathway going on the substrate a is getting converted into b to c to d to e now there are specific enzyme molecules that are carrying out these reactions now something needs to be there 
which will be able to shut down this pathway after the required level of the end product has been achieved. Don't you think that if these reactions, these enzymes will be active all the time, these reactions will keep on happening and the product E will keep on forming and there will be a wastage of energy. There will be a lot of expenditure inside the living bodies that will lead to wastage of energy. If there is only a certain amount of product E required inside the cell and this uh, pathway is not shutting down after that requirement is fulfilled, there is no need of E anymore. So we need to shut this pathway down to indicate that, okay, we have got the enough product, now close it down, close down. When I will need you again, I will activate the pathway. So how this is happening? This is happening with the help of feedback inhibition. So feedback inhibition is the inhibition in which the product of the pathway becomes the inhibitor, the allosteric inhibitor for the first enzyme of that reaction. So what happens is that this product, whatever the shape it is having, it is complementary to the shape of an allosteric site present in the first enzyme of the pathway. It goes and binds there and leads to the change in the conformation of the active site, leading to the inability of the previous substrate to bind to that active site and form the further products. So this is how the cells use this method to slow down the production, conserve the energy and to keep a state of balance within the cell. So this is what the feedback inhibition means, where the product, the final product is acting as the allosteric inhibitor for the first enzyme of that pathway. So this was about the uh, different effects of uh, parameters, different parameters on the enzyme activity. Thank you so much.